You want it raw? You love it raw? On your show, buddy. Make sure you let them know you love it raw. We love it raw! Welcome to We Love It Raw. One week removed from the greatest show on earth, WrestleMania. Hello, everybody. I am Mr. Caldero. And this week, I'm going to talk about two things that are very important. One, I'm going to talk about AJ Lee. Hold up. Let me hold my tears back. I have a picture of AJ Lee on my wall as we speak. And I don't know if I can go on every Monday and Friday, I'm sorry, Thursday, and not see AJ anymore. It's something... I cannot <laughs> comprehend. AJ, it's not that I didn't see it coming. I understand your decision. Your husband, CM Punk. By the way, CM Punk on Twitter said, thank you, AJ. I hope I honestly love CM Punk. Obsessed with AJ Lee. But CM Punk, are you really convincing your girl to leave WWE because you left WWE? I really hope that's not the case, bro. Because that'll be foul. You're going to UFC. She cannot go to UFC. She will get her ass beat by any contender in the ranks. But come on, Ronda motherfucking Rousey. Enough said. She ain't ready to do that. So hopefully in the future, we get to see something out of her. CM Punk is doing Thor. Also, he's in UFC. AJ Lee, I could only hope you have a project in line to do something because I'm a fan. And oh, don't get me going again. Do not get me going again. <sighs> Like my tears. To say this is to say that I am going to introduce you to this established segment of We Love It Raw, hosted by my co host, Chris Corey, the future. I call this Triple C's, Chris Corey's Corner. I will leave you with his review on Monday Night Raw. We're just a week removed from the best WrestleMania ever. And tonight was the fallout from the destruction of the beast, Brock Lesnar. And tonight we learned that in three weeks, there was going to be a WWE Championship match, but we just don't know who the contenders were. And tonight, Kane made matches leading up to the main event, which was a triple threat match. We had Kane versus Orton, Reigns versus Big Show, and Ryback Luke Harper. And all of these matches were a prelude to their triple threat match to determine who would face Seth Rollins in three weeks in Chicago at Extreme Rules. And Ryback won his. Roman Reigns won his. And Randy Orton won his. So now it was kind of leading up to a question. Who was going to go to Extreme Rules? At first it looked like it was Roman Reigns. But he got knocked out by Big Show as an interference. It was going to look like it was going to be Ryback. But he got distracted with the security. In comes Randy Orton. 
slithers his way to an RKO and the victory. So he is now the number one contender. So it will be Randy Orton versus Seth Rollins for the WWE title at Extreme Rules in three weeks. Should be interesting. And don't be surprised if you see Randy Orton win the WWE title at Extreme Rules. Next I want to talk about is AJ and her sudden retirement from the WWE. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. It was sudden and unexpected and shocking at the same time. She was a great diva, a great wrestler, great competitor in the ring. And multiple time divas champion. She just had a match with Paige at WrestleMania against the Bellas. She put up a fight. She was one of the best. Behind Trish Stratus, of course, who was the all-time great. But with AJ, you didn't know what to expect. Crazy side, good side, bad side. Tag team partners, frenemies, rivalries. She put on a show. She put on a match. She put on a competition. She will be missed. And I'm serious to say this, she has to go into the Hall of Fame. You know, it's, just a, it's a brief career, but she accomplished so much in the WWE during that time. And she does deserve to go into the Hall of Fame. Not now, but very soon. And that's the honest truth about that. With a girl of that talent, at an extraordinary pace and level that she competed in, she has to go into the Hall of Fame. And I think she will. Maybe within another two, three years or so. But she definitely will go into the Hall of Fame. And I'll tell you this right now. CM Punk has to do the induction. It would be fitting, perfect setting, period. And finally, I was watching tonight on the WWE Network. The Chris Jericho Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to tell you this right now. It was the worst podcast I've ever seen. Not because he had John Cena. He just didn't ask the good questions like Austin did with Vince and Triple H. It seemed to me, and this is just an honest opinion, that the Jericho podcast was subtle. It wasn't an all-out, no-holes-barred type of show, like Austin's podcast was. Maybe if they bring it on again and he has a different guest, maybe like a Stephanie McMahon, then I think it'll be better. But tonight's podcast with John Cena put me to sleep. Bad. Really, really bad. And if you want to see it for yourself, go to the WWE Network. It's free, by the way, for new subscribers throughout the month of April and if you want to watch this podcast go ahead sign up for the WWE Network watch it and I want to hear what you our fans have to say about that podcast and finally like I told you the WWE Network is free for this whole month of April it's a great deal and there are new shows that are coming on I can't name some of them but there's brand new shows coming on, and one of them's coming on in the end of April. It's with Jerry Springer. I think it's WWE Too Hot for TV. It's like a spin-off of the Jerry Springer show. And it looks really good. Some of these shows, like I said, look really, really good. And it's a great deal to bring these new shows onto the WWE Network because it gives a variety to the network. And for the new subscribers, which I know there's probably a lot out there. It's your time right now to experience why the WWE Network has been what it is. So if you want to catch these shows, sign up. Go to WWE.com. Sign up. It's free for the whole month. Not only will you get the new shows, you're going to get the pay-per-view. At an incredible value of $10. Or, as you... Many of them I put it as $9.99. But it's worth it. With these new shows, I'm looking forward to it. And if you sign up now for the WWE Network, you will love it as well. It's worth it. It's definitely something to take a look at. So I suggest you do that. 
before this month is over, and I want to hear what you new subscribers have to say. Thank you, Chris Corey, the future, for your Triple C segment. And um, we're both co-hosts of the show. And I appreciate Chris Corey's input every single week. But I couldn't disagree more about the Chris Jericho podcast on the WWE Network. This dude, Chris Corey, is talking about it was boring and he was falling asleep. Listen, brother, I'm about to cut a promo on you, brother, Chris Corey. First of all, Chris Jericho is a way better interviewer than Stone Cold Steve Austin. I listen to both of their podcasts twice a week. I don't need the WWE Network to film a video for me to be into their podcast. That's first of all. And you know what? Second of all, John Cena, you got to give him a lot of credit for showing his personality on the WWE Network. I was watching it with my friend that I grew up watching wrestling with. And me and him enjoyed the shit out of that. I don't know what NyQuil pills you was popping, Chris Corey, before you started the interview. You was just taking some Xanax and your whole mountain of pills before you started watching the Chris Jericho podcast. But... People, I'm telling you right now, if you want an insight of the business and you want an insight of how John Cena became who he is and all the struggles and all the, the names that he talked about touring with, people he toured with on the bus, a lot of Asian superstars from the past, and he humbled himself many times. And I must say, the John Cena on the podcast is... Way funnier, way more charismatic than John Cena on television. So it makes me feel like the John Cena on television is being told to be this way. And the John Cena in real life is actually funny. Because I found him to be a funny dude. His impressions of certain people were dead on. And also, I think that he's very positive when it comes to... Oh, I felt like he took a shot at CM Punk. If you listen closely like to the beginning of it, he pretty much said, I'm not here to complain about, oh, I didn't get the spot I wanted. I take the spot that they give me and I make the best possible situation out of it. And he's elevating the United States Championship. I personally think that it was a shot at CM Punk. That when times get hard and they put you underneath in a level to elevate others, you just start bitching and moaning. But to end it with that, I also want to say Monday Night Raw was trash. I was sitting here with my friend watching Raw. I usually watch Raw by myself, but he wanted to hang out and watch Raw with me. Watching Raw, three hours of nothing. No Triple H, no Stephanie McMahon, no Brock Lesnar, no Paul Heyman. No importance to anything. Three hours of nothing on the line. Seth Rollins, he's the top heel of the company. But I don't need a bunch of matches with the same guys all night. I was not feeling it. I was not loving Raw this week. The, the biggest news, which I already mentioned, the AJ Lee and the Chris Jericho podcast. So people... I am here to tell you that we love it raw, but just not this week. This is Mr. Caldero, and I want to thank everybody for listening. Please subscribe, share, like. This was a very slow week for WWE, in my opinion. So, I'm going to give you a short and sweet show. Thank you, and see you next week. And keep one thing in mind. Whenever you have a decision to make, keep it real and keep it raw. We love it raw!